Hello, my name is Rick Axum, curator at the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art. I'd like to walk you through Los Grandes del Arte Moderno Mexicano, an exhibition that celebrates the masters of Mexican modern art. The seven artists gathered in this exhibition, Manuel Alvarez Bravo, Frida Kahlo, Leopoldo Mendez, Jose Clemente Orozco, Diego Rivera, David Alfaro Siquares, and Rufino Tamayo, defined Mexican modernism in the early 20th century. Drawing upon works from the museum's permanent collection, the exhibition places these artists in a world context of modern art to acknowledge their achievements and to gain historical perspective. Following the Mexican Revolution, which took place in the years from 1910 to 1920, modern art enjoyed a vital period of artistic achievement. Mexico City was a major international hub for modern painters, photographers, filmmakers, composers, writers, and poets. The clear majority were Mexican. Among these was Diego Rivera, who was introduced to modern art while in France and Europe between 1913 and 1919. These three lithographs of his are details from a major fresco cycle Rivera created for the Ministry of Education in Mexico City in the 1920s. His subjects are the rural peasantry, whose oppressed lives were to be immeasurably improved by the socialist goals of the Mexican Revolution. Progressive artists like Rivera saw in the indigenous peoples of his country a true Mexican identity. In the spirit of modernism, Rivera wished to make art of his own time, to register and react to the contemporary world and improve its social conditions, here his own Mexican culture in the years after the revolution. In style, Rivera was a realist, although he tempered his realism with modern simplifications of form and in his paintings and murals with the exaggerated colors of Aztec and folk art. In its style, subject matter, and political content, Rivera's art paralleled the social realist art of the time in the United States and the Soviet Union. In El Roboso del Soledad, or Soledad's Shawl, Leopoldo Mendez pictures a wary-looking Mexican woman, a mestizo or person of mixed Spanish and native blood. The title of this line of cut refers to a Mexican film in which the people of a rural village led by a courageous heroine fight against a local tyrant. Politically charged in its meanings, the prince slashes of white surrounding the figure's head, the harsh scorings in the face, and the portrait's emotional intensity ally the work to European Expressionism, one of the major avant-garde styles at the time. Although Mendez never traveled abroad, his exposure to modern art, as was the case for many Mexican artists, came from art magazines and exhibition catalogs. As a co-founder of the People's Graphic Workshop, he was a true modern artist in his belief that art could be a critical vehicle for social protest and the betterment of the masses. In his paintings and prints, Jose Clemente Orozco, like Mendez, exhibited the influence of European Expressionism. In The Rear Guard, a lithograph from 1929, he presents a banded cluster of nearly two dozen men, women, and children who move across an open plain. Of the countryside, these peasants have been galvanized to fight in the Mexican Revolution. Befitting their purpose as a rear guard, many in the group carry rifles. The march is forced by circumstances of war. These people are displaced peoples, perhaps far from their village that may no longer exist. To emphasize their solidarity and single-minded purpose, Clemente Orozco, in an expressionist manner, exaggerates the perspective of the space they move through and unnaturally bunches the people together in similar poses, with no faces exposed and with sombreros and rifle barrels all at the same angle. In quick strokes of his lithographic crayon, he delineates the folds and creases of dresses and trousers, animating the figure's forward movements. The passages of almost solid black ink reinforce the solemnity of the moment. Although apparently a silent march, the scene is psychologically raw.
Rufina Tamayo's watermelon number one is a color lithograph that looks to the European tradition of still life painting. If it's bright reds and stark blacks and whites edged with emerald green suggest a Mexican predilection for dramatic color, the three slices of watermelon also bring to mind the visual characteristics of European cubism, one of the first modern art movements of the 20th century. Floating above each other in a hazy, multicolored atmosphere, the watermelon wedges are seemingly cut through by a mysterious, semi-transparent blade that, like a spike, holds them together. The print's ambiguous spaces, lack of traditional perspective, and plays upon fragmented forms are in line with the cubist alteration of objects. The riddle-like circumstances of this still life also lend it a magical sense that affiliates the image with the incongruous juxtapositions of surrealism, another early 20th century modern art movement. Manuel Alvarez Bravo was Mexico's first modern photographer. He is also one of the most important photographers in the history of the medium. As a modernist photographer, Alvarez Bravo prized photography's capacity to chronicle all aspects of everyday life. In his black and white photographs, he sought clarity of focus, formal inventiveness in his compositions, and an artful organization of lights and darks. If committed to these modernist ideals, Alvarez Bravo was equally devoted to Mexican history, culture, and identity. As can be seen in his photographs in the exhibition, he could seize upon native types in characteristic regional dress, for example, in his portraits of Margarita from Bonapac, an ancient Mayan site, and the man from Pampantla, a city in the state of Veracruz. André Breton, the celebrated champion of French surrealism, discerned in Bravo's work a surrealist sensibility in the symbolic and fantastical elements in such photographs as Portrait of the Eternal and Day of the Dead. Surrealism, which sought to reveal the workings of the subconscious and the play of dream states, was the leading movement in modern art in the 1920s and 30s. Inspired, as was Rufino Tamayo, by the tradition of European still life painting, Frida Kahlo, in still life, Pitayas, arranged in an unusual departure several decaying Pitaya fruits in a barren landscape, casting her subject matter in both private and Mexican terms. The Pitaya, a favorite of Kahlo, is a native fruit that is sweet and juicy, a life-giving food in the arid regions where it grows. One fruit is cut open to reveal the meat and seeds under tough and overripe skin. Perched nearby on a pitted rock is a calavera, a macabre folk art motif associated with the Day of the Dead, one of Mexico's most important holidays. The calavera skeleton holding a scythe is presented as the Grim Reaper. Callo suffered from a horrible bus accident at the age of 18 that left her in chronic pain for the rest of her life. Her still life of Patayas is symbolic, a highly intimate reflection on life and death. André Breton saw Callo's work, as he did Alvarez Bravo's, as surrealist in spirit. Callo, however, declined the association, saying that her paintings, like still life Patayas, were images of personal identity rather than surrealist dreams. Mexican modernism, infused as it is with the styles and values of modern art, was at its heart a search for a national style that proclaimed a new Mexican identity. Mexican modernism, if modern, was also a mix of native traditions in the visual arts, most especially religious, folk, and pre-Columbian art. David Alfaro Siqueiros' portrait of a famous Mexican educator, Moises Seance, borrows from the simplifications of early cubism in the incised features of the face. Such an approach to the human face is correlated with the interest of early modern artists in primitive art that entailed a Eurocentric perception that the simplicity of primitive art reflected less complex and therefore more authentic and fully realized cultures. In this spirit, Alfaro Siqueiros' portrait 
brings to mind the colossal human heads cut from basalt boulders of the Olmec culture, the first authentic Mesoamerican civilization, dating in its origins to around 1,500 years before Christ. Alfero Siqueiros, in his blend of styles, ties the present to the deep past. Mexican modernism came of age at the 25th Venice Biennale, staged in 1950. The Biennale is a prestigious competitive exhibition of contemporary art that, with few exceptions, has been presented every two years since 1895. Mexico, for the first time in 1950, was represented by its own pavilion or exhibiting spaces. In addition to Clemente Orozco, Diego Rivera, and Rufina Tamayo, Alfaro Siqueiros was included in the Mexican contingent. He was awarded the second prize for all participating artists, helping to confirm the international status of Mexican modernism and secure for it a pride of place in modern art. <laughs>